Everyone from age three to 103 finds writing hard. We all find clever ways of avoiding it. I do, and I've been writing mainly educational stuff and some poetry and stories since I was a teenager. This programme is about guided writing. We'll see how teachers in one primary school are guiding children to overcome that fear of the blank page. Writing isn't just about communication, it's also about composition. Writing enables the writer to order thoughts in the brain in a way that isn't possible otherwise. The arm and the hand aren't just a computer lead going from the brain to the page or the screen. The fact of writing is made in the act of writing. St Peter's Primary School in Telford organises its classes vertically in two-year groups. Writing has been the focus for the school's development this academic year. The school has an excellent reputation for creative teaching and learning. Guided writing has always been an important concept for us, um, but I think it needed refreshing. And we were looking for a, a different way of targeting particular groups of children, and guided writing seemed for us to be just that. Nicola Lewis's Year 1 and 2 class has visited Stafford Castle, which is the inspiration for this factual guided writing session. Photographs of the trip have been used to prompt the children's writing, and now one of the final stages of their work involves creating a guidebook. Let's have a look inside our big book. What have we got so far? A contents page. What is missing? Paragraph. A paragraph of general information. I'm hoping that the children will make a paragraph of writing for their information book. We've already discussed the vocabulary that we want them to use, which is some of which has come from the visit to Stafford Castle and the others come through research, both in books and the internet. One of the important things today is that you are practicing what you're going to write before you write it. So you'll need to agree with your partner the whole sentence before you write it down. In a second I'm going to put these headphones on and have a little listen to what Nicola's doing with the group with whom she's working this morning. It's not always easy managing the class to free up time with a guided writing group, but the individual attention can pay dividends. These children are some of the more able, but they still have their own needs and their own challenges to meet. I want you to compose your first sentence together to make a really good sentence using the first word in your vocabulary list. I don't know why I should give the illuminated manuscript. I don't know how to start it. What was an illuminated manuscript? Uh, it's a book um, that has fancy writing and beautiful pictures. So how would you start your sentence then? Sacklane. What do you think you Made might write? Made even artists. Made. Made. Books that had um, fancy writing and beautiful pictures. And these were called... Illuminated manuscripts. Illuminated manuscripts, that's fine. Okay. I really like the way that uh, Nicola is rehearsing orally with the children some of these quite complicated sentences uh, which they're going to write. So if you change your full stop to a comma, then you can carry on writing. And you might put the mason would make and then name some of those things that you would make. Okay. Do you need a capital letter after a comma? No, but you need to remember to put something at the end when you've written those things. What's that going to be? A full stop. OK. And, of course, uh, there's always the old soldiers of sentence beginnings, full stops, commas, when you have a capital letter, when you don't. And that's all part of it. It's not being done as a separate thing. It's all part of the overall act of writing. Right, what's your next word on your vocabulary list? Undermining. And what is undermining, Oliver? When the enemies dig under the walls to get to the other side. So what? What are you? Then how are you going to carry on? If the siege didn't work. Stop. 
You remember that? If the siege didn't work, okay, that will be your sentence starter. And carry on then. <laughs> Your, your work for the feedback in the plenary session. In the castle there is a person called a mason that makes himself to stone to protect the castle. The mason would make the floors, stairs and the arrows slits. What did you have to do to make it that brilliant? We added some commas to make some more detail to it, so it makes more sense to the, for the writing. Well done for your readers to read it and understand it. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you think she's done really well. Well, Nicola, that seemed to go like a flash. Is that the normal way that you organise guided writing in these kinds of groups? Yes. Okay. They tend to be ability groups, yeah. although there is some de degree of flexibility within that. For example, if one child is struggling with sentence construction, then I would put them into a different guided writing group that would cover that. Yeah. The other thing I really liked was the way that I could see pairs of children are helping each other, uh, feeding off each other's efforts, building on each other's efforts. I thought that was very impressive. What kind of ambition uh, do you have for them as writers? Um, well, being able to articulate what they want to say in the right kind of way, using com more complex sentences, um, good vocabulary, uh, sentence structure, um, and really getting at some of those, those higher order skills. And with great cheerfulness of spirit, he pushed on towards the wild wood, which lay before... Putting those higher order skills into practice is the year five and six class with teacher Claire James. After hearing an excerpt from The Wind in the Willows, Claire asks the children to think about the kind of language which makes an effective story opening. The children discuss in pairs before sharing their ideas with the rest of the class. How do you create a suitable atmosphere? Powerful verbs. Fantastic. Powerful verbs. Personification. Well, they can use similes as well. Take a close look at the board. We're going to be thinking about a suspense story. So what other word might you know suspense story by? Um, it could be like a scary story. Yes, it is. In a moment, I would like you to write your own opening to a suspense story. And I would like your character to turn the door knob and open the door. OK, here we go again. Wait, as I turn how can we show how our character is feeling? Should we, like, shaking a bit, maybe? Yeah. Their hand is yeah. trembling as they reach out towards the door. Brilliant. I was thinking of, like, describing how what the door looks like, saying that it's quite rusty and old and, like, the paint's flaking. Have you got an idea for your sentence, then? Hmm. Not at the moment. Just thinking it through. I'm gonna do, like, where something happens, like, to the doorknob. Or, like, it's not just creaking. It's like having another sound when you turn the doorknob. Perhaps but, a grinding yeah, sound. Yeah. But when you actually open the door, that's when it creaks. Ah, OK, so we need to think through that sentence for you, Sam. Trembling, James reached uncontrollably to the old rusted doorknob. Why did you use the word uncontrollably? I thought it was sort of like having it, having James like being possessed by something. So he was being like forced to open this door. Perhaps you could talk about your arms having a mind of their own. So try and add to that idea a bit and really explain what's going on to your reader. 
I really like the way that Claire is getting them to empathise with the character, whoever that character is going to be, with the with the protagonist. Get inside the skin of that protagonist. How is is that person feeling? A thin shaft of light from a tiny window bounced off an empty bottle and illuminated. Um, illuminated. Where is the where is the piano? It's like in a corner. In the corner of the room, so perhaps try that. There you go. Ah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. And then get closer to the piano, and then you could describe the dust. The yeah, well, sound. actually, what I was thinking, I just thought of, like, it's illuminated something, but don't actually say what it is at the ah, moment until I get closer, what's a good idea and then you find out what it is. So how are you going to... Cameron knows something about suspense. Don't give the game away too quickly. Hint, not tell. Silhouetted. Thomas, could you read out your opening to the class? Trembling, James's hand, that seemed to have a mind of its own, reached uncontrollably to the old, rusted doorknob. He edged forward, as if he had been harpooned and was being dragged towards the box in the centre. Of the center. Closer, closer. Cobwebs clutched at his clothes, and the dripping sound of water was a chorus of bells. What did Thomas do well, do you think? I like the way he used the metaphor. Um, the, I think it was the sound of dripping water. It was a chorus of bells. Um, well, he used harpooned. Yes, it was a very powerful image, wasn't it? It's him being dragged in, having no control. It's really got a grip of him. How successful was Thomas's opening? Yes, I think it was quite successful, wasn't it? Well done, Thomas. Thank you. Out of that particular group, was there anybody that you'd say made a big leap forward in the course of the afternoon, or was it a bit of progress all around? I was pleased with Thomas, because particularly his sentence started, um, he's found it a bit more difficult to um, include a range. So I was really pleased that straight away he was really working on um, using different words such as trembling mm. from the very start and he's really working on that mm. so that was I was really mm. pleased. Yeah. I hear that guided writing isn't just for the children. Oh absolutely not um, and as it happens we've got an evening tomorrow when we've invited parents and children into school just to look at how writing <laughs> develops in school. That's worked very well for us mm. um, and it's a chance for us to show parents how we teach writing and how it can develop and progress from reception right through to year five and six. If you've got a basic understanding of this early age, you've just got to help them as they get older. It will become easier the longer they're doing it. I've just come along to see how my granddaughter is being taught how to write so that we can help her uh, if she needs any assistance, although they're actually better than we are, I think. <laughs> the flip side of the fear of writing, which we all feel, is the profound satisfaction which a completed piece of writing gives. It exercises an emotional muscle, which has something to do with having imposed some kind of order on a bit of the world. And it's that satisfaction which the children at St Peter's are beginning to feel.